Welcome back to our series on how to handle sextortion. In this video, we're going to talk about what to do if someone is blackmailing you with photos or videos, embarrassing content that they possess over you. So, the first thing you need to understand is that there are two fundamentally different ways you can get blackmailed with photos. The first is, you can get blackmailed by someone you know. For example, someone that you've been in a relationship with who happens to have nude or personal or private pictures or videos of you that were taken during your relationship. And the second way to get blackmailed with photos is if you are lured into an online relationship or the pretense that you will be in a relationship with someone online whom you've never met. You've had some sort of an online connection with this person, meaning you've been messaging back and forth for some period of time building this relationship and throughout this time of building this online connection you were requested to send embarrassing pictures or videos of yourself nude pictures and you send them to this person so these are the two different ways you can get blackmailed the ransom for not releasing this information will also usually be different for each one in the first scenario the person you've been in a relationship with could potentially ask for you to come back into the relationship or to send them more naked pictures or videos. In the second scenario, more likely than not, you will be asked for monetary compensation, usually digital money in the form of Bitcoin, gift cards, or other cryptocurrency. So that's the fundamental difference between the two ways that you can get blackmailed and the two different types of ways that you may get asked to pay a ransom for the information not to be released. In either case, the fact that somebody has gained access to your private pictures or videos is the result of a formation of some sort of relationship with someone, either online or in real life. For the purpose of this video, we're going to discuss the more likely scenario, which is the scenario of you sending pictures or videos to someone online whom you have never met in real life. You've built an online relationship with this person, and that relationship was strong enough for you to trust that person enough to send them pictures or videos. Because you would normally not send intimate pictures or videos to number one, someone you have never met, and number two, that you don't trust. In order to make someone trust a person whom they should not be trusting, in other words, if you want to have someone trust you and you want to do something bad to that person, it's very important to create a diversion. It's very important to take the person's attention away from the most important question, which is, should I trust this person to whom I'm sending my private pictures and videos? That diversion can be long communication, and that diversion can be sexually explicit moments with someone you've never met online. So the first diversion, long communication, is successful because people tend to think that just because they've been communicating with someone for a period of time, and shared some personal stories or information, then that all of a sudden makes the person trustworthy. That is an incorrect assumption. Long communication, if it's online, does not determine in a coherent way whether a person is trustworthy or not. Not only that, but communicating with someone for a long period of time, having never met that person, but discussing personal things and releasing or being asked to release personal information, such as nude pictures and videos, is already in itself a huge red flag. So that is very important to understand. Number two, the second way a diversion happens is people who reference sex and sexual activity. Because if you make a person think about sex or sexual activity, his mind will be occupied or her mind will be occupied with that activity versus thinking about the things that really matter, such as, if I send these personal photos to this person, can they be exploited in some way? Can they be used against me? And what could be the repercussions of that? So those two diversions are important to think about because more often than not, if you're watching this video, these diversion tactics were used on you successfully. And if you're watching this, you probably released your pictures and videos to someone that you're not supposed to because you weren't thinking about the right things at the right time. 